talking just about the, you know, this is this teaching on the supernatural team. But how many know that really everybody should function in the supernatural? You know, I had a couple of them because I just, my wife and I both, we endeavor to, Lord, just use us wherever. Wherever. And if you stay real sensitive, he'll use you in, in maybe places you didn't think he was going to use you. My son and I, we were in a, we were in, in all places, we were in a tea shop. You know, coffee shops, but also they have these tea shops, right? And this tea shop, and it's a, a Korean tea shop. And of course, all the ones behind the counter are Koreans and real nice ladies behind the counter. <clears throat> and I'm sitting there, my son's talking to me, and I'm kind of facing, you know, where they make the tea and everything. And I keep looking, and, and one young lady continues to be highlighted. And so I asked the Lord, what, what is this? What are you doing? What are you saying? You know? And so as my son's talking to me, he's talking to me. You ever had that happen? He's talking. I'm listening, but I'm listening more to him. Don't mean to be rude, but I am listening more to him. And he said, listen, you tell her, but I'm going to open doors for her that nobody can shut. I just, I have a plan for her, and she needs to know that. And now, how many know once you get a word like that, now you've got a choice? And I don't, I don't know if you've ever walked out on that. I have, and I just, we both endeavor. We're not going to do that anymore. You know, if I'm wrong, if I'm right, whatever, we're going to do it. And so we're getting ready to go, and we're standing there talking to her. And I said, excuse me. I said, I don't even know if you believe in any of this. I didn't even know she was saved. She was real joyful. I said, you know, the Lord spoke something to me about you. She goes, he did? I said, yeah, he, he told me to tell you that he is opening a door for you. He, she goes, oh, I've been saved one year. And he did open a great door for me. I said, well, that's good, but that's not what I'm talking about. The Lord is going to do something. And it was so cool because the older lady that was next to her, because she had her mask on. But you know, how many know that some people, when they smile, their eyes disappear? She had no eyes. They were just gone. And she was just so excited about this word that was given to this young girl that was working in her. I think she was the owner probably of the tea shop. But she was, so, she was more blessed than, she didn't really know how this worked, the other girl. But the, but the owner was like, oh. You know, and you could tell that it was right on, not because of her response, but because of her response. And then I said, do you understand? And I had to explain it to her a little bit. And she says, wow, okay, okay. I said, be looking for it. The Lord's going to do some things for you. He's going to open some things. He loves you. And you know, when you leave those kind of deposits in places, that's what God wants the whole church to do. Another one, we're at the airport and we're Getting ready to get on the plane, Kelly heads into the restroom. I, I head into the restroom, but I noticed that there's a young African American man that's been cleaning the restroom. So I kind of stop and say, "Hey, is this open?" Go, oh, yeah, yeah, it's open. <clears throat> so I go in there and I'm using the restroom. I hear him cleaning. He's doing his job. The Lord says, "I want you to talk to him." I'm like, "Okay." He says, "You tell him I'm going to take the lid off his life. I'm going to take the lid off his life." In a so, you know, we happened to walk out at the same time. I said, excuse me, sir. I said, I don't even know if you believe in any of this. But you know what? The Lord spoke to me about you. He turned to me and says, he did. I said, yeah. He said he's going to take the lid off your life. He goes, boy, I hope so. No, he is. He is going to take the lid off your life. He loves you. And you could tell, whew, impacted. See, those, those are the manifestations of the Spirit that God wants to do everywhere. Everywhere. But part of the, the supernatural team training is not only training to, to be on the team where, you know, Pastor Kathy, you know, Con, she prays over the whole team and, and, and the Lord will highlight a couple of people. It's kind of how it works. And she'll call those people or text them and say, hey, the Lord highlighted your name. Are, are you open? You're going to be here this Sunday. If they answer yes, then she gets hold of the team, pray for them. It's going to be these two. That's what we do. And that's good. That happens on Sunday. But what about every other day of the week? What about every other day? God wants to use you and me all the time. And it's just being sensitive to the person of the Holy Spirit. And you could be more or less sensitive to Him. How many know what I'm talking about? You could be more in tune to Him or less in tune to Him. And just tuning yourself and, and, and allowing yourself to really, really hear from Him. And then being bold enough to step out when you got something. Because a lot of us go through the same thing. What is that you? That's, that's kind of random. Is that you? No, ask yourself, why would you think about that right now? It is random. It's totally random. But why would you think, of, like, I'll butter your bread? What is, what is that, Lord? What are you, what are you, what are you saying? But it, it means something to somebody. 
See, God wants to do those things. So some of the things that we've gone over so far, we just talked about what the Supernatural team is. We talked about really Harvest Church International, just mission, vision, slogan, kind of who we are. And uh, we kind of got into a lot of who we are as a church. Do you, do you understand that really to flow on a Supernatural team in this church, you need to understand who we are? You do. The reason is, is who the Lord uses in the manifestations of the Spirit in any church are those that this is their home. Now, we have special speakers come in like Jeff, you know, like Brandon Brim, like Joe Morris. We have those people come in, and yes, they, they are ones that have connected with us, so they're going to have a word for the church. But the Lord said to me a few years ago, and it, it shocked me when he said it to me, he says, never allow a visitor, somebody just comes in, never allow a visitor to come in and prophesy in your house. I'm like, God. <laughs> he said, listen, they have no investment in this house. He said, they don't understand the vision, the mission, and the flow of the Spirit in this house. He said, I mean, no, there's a certain flow that comes in a house. And when you're invested in the house and you're a part of the house, that flow is going to come out of you for the house. That's the way it works. And so, boy, I questioned him on that. Lord, why? He said, no, no. He said, I'm going to teach you how to create a place that's safe, but spiritual. How many know just, just because something spiritual doesn't have to be crazy where nobody knows what's going on? The old time Pentecost used to be this. Oh, the crazier it is and the more unknown and crazy things that happen, then that's just God. It may be God. But you understand, he asked me one time, he said, I said things should be done decently in order. I said, yeah, you said that. Don't you think somebody in the room ought to know what that order is? I said, yeah. He says, who do you think that would be? I guess that would probably be me because I'm the pastor. He said, yes, that's what leadership's for. That's what leader, I expect overseers to oversee. Myself, my wife, our staff, overseers oversee, right? But as people come up in the supernatural things of the Spirit, man, there, there has got to be a, 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 a heart to be able to want to be used that way. Amen? And so what we're going to head in tonight is turn to Romans 14, 17. You can go away to two translations. We'll start with the New King James Version. Romans 14, 17. How many know when the Apostle Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus, his life changed incredibly? Here he is. He's mad. He's upset. He's got legal papers. I'm going to arrest you all. <laughs> and he's just ugly and he's mean and he's nasty. He's on the road to Damascus. He's got a mission. He's already put him in jail in Jerusalem. I'm going to foreign places now. I'm the man. And all of a sudden he meets Jesus. How many know Jesus will screw up your life? In a good way. He will. Think about it. Paul had it all laid out. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He called himself that. I, got, I, have, I have got the papers to arrest people, this sect. How dare they? All of a sudden, he meets Jesus, messes up everything. Everything. Bam. And he has to go actually into the wilderness for a while. When you read the scripture, he, he's, he went into Arabia. He, he was in Damascus and that whole experience, you know, he went there. But they had to let him down in a basket over the wall. He ended up gone for a while. How many know when you have an experience like that, you better go to the desert. Find out what just happened. <laughs> and man, he had to process this. Well, here's what he began to learn. Not only did Jesus, the king of kings that rose from the dead, give you a new life. He gave you a new helper. Because remember that day? Remember when Ananias came to him? I love that whole story. Because here Ananias is praying, the guy that the Lord uses. And he says, Ananias, I love his answer. Here I am, Lord. What a great answer. He didn't say, is that you, Lord? He knew the Lord. Here I am, Lord. He's ready. What do you want? What do you want? He said, listen, I want you to go down to the street called Straight. There's a man named Saul. He's praying. He, I gave him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in, laying hands on him. For his eyes to be opened, be filled with the Holy Ghost. I love Ananias. Lord, do you know this is a dangerous man? You ever had those conversations with the Lord trying to inform him of something maybe he doesn't know? <clears throat> he says, listen, go. Right? So Ananias gets down there. Paul gets filled with the Spirit. Scales fall off Paul's eyes. He's, now his whole life is different. What do you do? You've got a team you brought down there to arrest people. Well, something happened. What happened? The Holy Spirit happened. See, the Holy Spirit is the agent of this kingdom. 
Father God's in heaven. Jesus is at his right hand. The Holy Spirit's right here in this room. And when you learn him, he will teach you and lead you and instruct you. And the more you know him, wow. You know, all angels listen to him. Everything. He, he's the great agent of the kingdom. He's the one. And when you learn to listen to him, you, he will let you in on stuff. Amen? Look here, Romans 14, 17. Pull that up. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy, what? It's in the Holy Spirit. Hey, pull that one up, Wade, in the Passion Translation. I read this today. I just thought this was a good one. Just the way they say this. Romans 14, 17 in the Passion Translation. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of rules about food and drink, but is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. The kingdom's in the realm of the Holy Spirit. This is the kingdom. Filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. This, this kingdom we're in, this is the realm of the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, it's so encouraging. I don't know if... I, I jumped online as soon as I heard that Amy Coney Barrett uh, was connected to a charismatic Catholic group called the People of Praise. I don't know about you, I jumped online. I'm finding these people of praise. You know they're spirit-filled? They speak in tongues? They operate in the gifts of the Spirit? Yeah. You know, she's standing there with her hand on the Bible, and I'm just going, oh, you go, girl. Why? God's shifting stuff now. Why? This is in the realm of the Holy Spirit. People have been praying now for decades, God, we need your help. We need your help. Forgive us. Lord, we totally went left, and we should have stayed right. We, we, we've been apathetic. We've been lethargic. We have not been involved with this. I mean, I, I, I so love uh, love for Lane County, the, the Sarah that we met. Man, I don't know if you guys know this. One of the things, one of her mandates is to help us in this city grab hold of believers and get them on the city council, get them in the mayor. Get, yeah, that's what she's here to do. It's like, it's time. Because we're not going to take over this city just with the move of the Spirit and not have those places filled. And God's been working. I don't know if you guys know uh, uh, that, that our, our Lane County Sheriff right now, he's totally loves Jesus. City manager totally loves Jesus. The, the, the uh, fire chief totally loves Jesus. God's been, th th there's some people that U of O just hired. Steve Buss told me about them. They totally love God. You know, God, wow. Well, he's doing that. Well, also, we have city council members. I remember Jim Torrey one time. He called a bunch of pastors together. I'll never forget this. There's probably 15 of us in the room. He said, guys, I need your help. He said, we have, a, we have a, 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 just an open forum meeting for tax money to be used, kind of for streets and different things. He says, and all of a sudden, all these people show up because they're very organized on that side. And he said, and they all show up and they, they all want to divert all the, the street money to build more trails for bicycles. He said, I'm not against bicycles. We've got some great bicycle trails here. We need to fix our roads. But then the city council said, see, this is what the people want. You got to help me out here. <laughs> we need to have some people showing up. Bruce Hanna said the same thing. He called some pastors together in Salem one time. And he, at the time, he was a co- uh, co-leader of the house up there. He's from Winston, Roseburg area. He says, guys, you got to help me out. He said, I got to be that guy that stands up when they're talking about transgender restroom stuff. I stand up and go, stop. What are we doing right now? You got to be kidding me. We got problems. We need to fix things for the people. And you want to discuss this right now? And then that's all. He said, you got to help me out here. <laughs> But God is changing things right now. The Holy Spirit, I believe, and I will tell the youth this, you know, in our youth group right now, maybe the next mayor. You don't know that. God could be training them right now. But we've got to think that way. City council members, the governor could come right out of this church. See, but why? Because this is the realm of the Holy Spirit. It's time for the harvest to be on. It's time for when churches want to be built, Right? And they, well, we just can't really zone it that way. We can zone any way we want. What do you want? Let's do it right now. <laughs> they make decisions all the time. Somebody is. God's people getting in that realm. That realm of the Spirit. Amen? Now turn to John 14. We're going to talk a little bit about the person of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus introduced him to his guys. Right? 
And then, of course, it's recorded for us. But John 14, 15. You could pull, you could pull that up. Matter of fact, Wade, uh, in the AMP. Not the AMPC, but the AMP. You know, he began to introduce. Here's another thought, guys. When you read the book of John, right? And you get into John, like chapter 12. Do you realize that, like, I don't know, what, maybe five chapters actually happen in one room? Read it. You find out that here he's going in to do the last uh, uh, supper, the communion with them. And like five chapters, and part of the, what we're getting ready to talk about happened in that room, the teaching in that room. It's like, oh, well, this is amazing. There was a lot of content that happened in that room that day. Well, you know, John, what does he call himself in, in the book of John? The, the disciple that Jesus loved. What a secure individual, right? Well, he's there. He's listening to this. He's recording this. He says, he starts it this way. If you really love me, Jesus said, you will what? <clears throat> is there any part of that that we as believers don't understand? Listen, if I really love God, I'm going to obey God. Whatever he tells me to do, well, Lord, I, I don't know if I want to do it. There's not an option. He's the king. <laughs> you got to get to the place, whatever you say, I'll do. Look, at he goes on. <clears throat> he says, and... Now, he's talking about the first group that obey. The and goes with those that obey. And I'll ask the Father. And he will give you what? Another helper, which what he's saying is, I'm your helper right now. I'm your helper. I like what he says to him. Did you ever have a time when you didn't, when you needed anything? Did you need any food? Did you need any money when you're hanging out with me? Did you need, no, nothing, Lord. Nothing. Why? Because he's with them. He's their helper. Think about what Jesus did. He had 12 grown men. Some of them surrendered, surrendered uh, businesses in order to be with him. He not only fed them, he fed their families for three and a half years. Had a treasure that was stealing out of the bag. You know, if there's 10 bucks in the bag and they take five, people know it. If there's 20,000 bucks in the bag and you take 20, nobody knows it. Uh, my point is, wow, Jesus, he took care of people. He's their helper, right? Here's what he says. I'm going to give you another helper. And then what this is, you see in parentheses, this is the kind of the Greek breakdown for that word. Comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. To be with you, what? You know, if you ever have a thought, you know, here's one thing I'll, I'll never say. David did say this in the Psalms. Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. I never pray that. Why would I pray that? Look at that. He'll be with you. He, he's not getting out. He's with you. He wants to be with you forever. This should be in our mouth. That feeling, oh, I just don't feel God right now. No, but he's with me forever. He's here right now with me. Next verse. To the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and he will be where? Oh, in you. Next verse, I'll not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, helpless. I will, I will come back to you. After a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you see me. Because I live, you'll live also. On that day, when that time comes, you'll know for yourselves that I'm in my Father. And you are in me, and I am in you. There was a lot in there. So the person who has my commandments... And keeps them is the one who really loves me. Whoever really loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him. And I'll what? I'll reveal myself to him. I'll make myself real to him. Judas, not as scary to ask him, Lord, what has happened that you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he'll what? Now he says, he's just said that three times. You know what I'm saying? You know, anytime somebody says something three times, I think it's important. Now, why would the Lord have to tell this to the church? This, he knew this would be recorded. Because he wants to make sure, listen, obedience is key. It's tough to live a victorious Christian life if you never obey. Obedience is absolutely key. Repentance is key. Humility is key. All these things, right? It says, he will keep my word teaching and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. 
One who does not really love me does not what? There he goes again. So really, I mean, according to the words of Jesus, if I won't obey God, do I really love him? It's pretty quiet in here. <laughs> now, he loves you. But I mean, are you really dis displaying love to him if the king of the universe, if love's asking me to do something, and I'm constantly telling him no? What am I saying to him? I'm really saying I don't trust you. I have a better way. And it boils down, maybe I just really don't love you. I mean, could you imagine saying to my wife, babe, I love you so much. You're so awesome, but I got another date tonight, so I'll be home late. How many know that wouldn't fly with Pastor Kelly? Man, not going to happen. Right? But why? Because that, that's being insincere. That's not real. Listen, if I'm really connected with her, with my heart, then it's going to show up. See, God wants this. He wants us to obey him. Said, and the word, the teaching which you hear is what? This is not Jesus talking. He says, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. Wow. So G this is coming straight from God. Everything Jesus did was the father's will, right? But it's the father's who sent me. I've told you these things while I'm still with you. Next verse. But the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby. Look at that list, guys. What do you need? Do you need comfort? That's him. You, boy, I could really use a good counselor right now. Guess what? You got one, right? Man, I could use some strength. I, I love Brother Hagin one time. He, he spent some time talking about standby. And it was the best example I've ever heard. He said he got a car one time and he said that in, in the, in him and Aretha were pulling a trailer right? He says, and here I am, and I'm on the flat, and I'm driving, and all of a sudden, he said, when I start going uphill, something like over the Rockies, all of a sudden, something happens. My carburetor is a four-barrel carburetor, but most of the time, I'm only using two. He said, but I got two on standby, and when the time came to climb that hill, he said, I'd put my foot down, and you'd feel it. He said, that's what the Holy Ghost you're going on in life, you don't got a lot going on, going on, you're just, praise the Lord. And all of a sudden, here comes something. Bam. You know, he's your standby. He's your four-barrel carburetor. He'll kick in. But that's what he does. If you need that right now, that's what he is. He said, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent who? And act what? He'll teach you what? Isn't that a great verse? Is there ever a time when we ever should let this come out of our mouth? I just really don't know what to do. No, if you don't know what to do, ask God. And then say, God, I don't know what to do, so I'm asking you, what do you want me to do? And I thank you for showing me and teaching me because you know everything. And then people, what are you going to do? It's on the way. <laughs> I'm perceiving that right now. I'm getting it. Why? Because he's going to teach me all things. This verse right here works anywhere. You know, I told the story when I was in, in, in I, didn't, I didn't do super good in school, not because I wasn't a really good, not because I wasn't smart, I just didn't apply myself. I, I, I needed to be challenged. I never took homework home ever, 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 right? I had like a B average, but it could have been so much more. But when I got hold of God, and, I, and, you know, they kept challenging me in the military. Oh, Cuff, you should take some college classes and college classes. And thought came to me, wait a minute. This college-level evaluation program, CLEP test, they said, you know what? We'll let you, we'll let you actually test to see if you would know what's on that class. And we'll just give you the college credit for it. I said, what? So I went down to the library and I got how to study for a CLEP test. <laughs> I didn't well, understand. He's going to teach me all things. I just read through that. And, and, I, I, and I clepped out between 30 and 33 college hours, just bam. How many know that? That's a little bit of cash. Well, that helped me get promoted, right? Because that was, it ended up going on my record. But understand, when he says all things, guess what that means? No, not all things, whatever you believe that means. Well, you know, it's just spiritual things. Okay. If that's what you believe. If you believe it's all things... I mean, all things. You're at work. You don't know what to do. Or, or I know Dave, Pastor Dave, well enough. 
Okay, he's driving, right? Okay, Lord, wh- where should I go right now? The Lord shows him where to go. And then bam, he gets a ride. Bam, gets another one. Why, the Lord knows everything. <laughs> yeah, he, he's your partner. He, no, but it has to do with what you believe about all things. The limit is not God. It's never God. It's what do you believe? Because when you start engaging with him, the Holy Spirit will meet you right where you are. He loves to just stretch you. How many of you have figured that one out? Wow. He'll teach you all things. He'll help you remember what? Everything. Everything. Now, everything that I've told you, now let me ask you this. If he can help you remember everything that God told you, can he help you remember where you lost that or that? Has anybody ever had him help find stuff? Look at his hands. You know, sometimes why we don't, why we don't find it, we don't ask. Lord, where, where is that? I'll give you an example. Uh, my son, when he was here, we, he used my wife's car, and I took my key off. And, you know, he used it, and he gave it to Kelly, and we just couldn't find it. I just thought, now, in the past, I would have really pressured her and gotten mad. <laughs> big baby you know i just thought hey whatever god bring it to me week goes by two weeks go by three weeks go i found it praise the lord hooked it back up on my ring my god knows where everything is he'll bring it to you he'll bring it to you i didn't need it she had a key she's driving the car you know my key's just sitting wherever my key's sitting right so if i need her car i'll use her key but i ask god he'll do this You'll find things. You'll remember. Bring to remembrance. Next verse. Or is that the end? Go to. Let's go to John 16. Verse 7. John 16. Verse 7. Jesus says some pretty amazing things. Starting in verse 7. That if I didn't know it was the Lord. And that it's impossible for him to lie. It would be a tough one to believe. Here's what he says. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, he's talking to a bunch of guys that have been with him for three and a half years, and he, they've seen some crazy stuff. He's walked on water. He's fed with the little boy's lunch. He's raised the dead. He messed up funerals, at least two, three of them. Just totally. Lazarus in the grave for four days. I mean, he saw some crazy stuff. And then he says to them this. It is actually to your advantage that I go away. Then he says this. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, will not come to you. But if I go away, I will what? I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you. To be in close fellowship with you. And he, when he comes... He'll convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a Savior. Now, do you understand right now that's happening right now? You know, if, if, if you in your workplace or, or wherever your uh, circle of influence is, I know just talking to John Sayer and where he works. I mean, he's just a light shining there right now. And sometimes it makes people a little uneasy. And the Lord gave him a word here not too long ago that he said, I, I just, I shared it, but I felt kind of awkward. But man, it was the Lord. Well, he, he, what is he doing? He's doing the kingdom stuff. So all of a sudden, just now his presence in that warehouse brings conviction of sin. People, oh, man, why do I feel bad when I'm around you? I mean, I like you, but what is that? Well, God wants them. He, he's showing them, listen, you're going to have to change. The clock is running, amen? He said, I will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need for a Savior, about righteousness and about judgment, about sin and the true nature of it because they do not believe in me. That's the sin they're guilty of. Not believing in Jesus. He can fix everything else. And my message about righteousness, personal integrity, godly character, because I'm going to my Father and you'll see me no longer. About judgment, the certainty of it. Because the ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. Listen, judgment is real. And do you remember when Paul was standing before either Felix or Festus? And he just began to speak of judgment. 
three things, but one of them was judgment. And it says, the guy shook. He says, go, go. I'll, I'll talk to you at a more convenient time. Why was he shaking? Paul was on it. Let me tell you what's going to happen. <laughs> this is coming. Oh, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. No, it doesn't matter what you want to hear. This is coming. This is going to happen. Right? And judgment come. It says here that the ruler, Satan, has been judged and condemned. Listen, there's, there's no, well, maybe he'll catch up and rise again. It's over for him. Just a matter of time now. Next verse. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot what? Let me ask you this. So the disciples, the Lord says, I have many things to say to you, but you can't bear to hear them now. Now, when he left, did he just leave the world with those things and then never shared them? Uh, let me see if I can get this quote right. This is P.C. Nelson. He said this. He said that the, 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 the teachings of Paul are the advanced teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. They're divinely inspired. What Paul taught, they are. It's what the Lord took away unsaid. He said it through Paul. That's why the, 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 the Bible, the letters to the church is so important. It is Jesus talking. Teaching the church. Right? He's instructing the church. Why? Because now we have the Holy Spirit. Have you guys ever read a scripture and you totally enjoyed it and you got revelation out of it? And then maybe you read it a year later and you got something new. Then like two years later, you got something new. Same one. Wow. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit teaching. Let me give you a little secret. That goes on forever. That book is alive. <clears throat> what is it? 101st Psalm says, Thy word, O Lord, is subtle forever in heaven. Same word we have here, he has there, it's subtle. Next, next verse. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into what? All truth. Full and complete truth. He'll not speak on his own initiative. He'll speak whatever he hears from the Father. The message regarding the Son. He'll disclose to you what is to come in the future. He will glorify and honor who? Me. Because the Holy Spirit will take from what is mine and He'll disclose it to you. All things the Father has are mine. Because of this, I said that He, the Spirit, will take from what is mine and will, re will reveal it to you. A little while and you will no longer see me, see me. And again, a little while you will see me. Some of his disciples said one to another, what does he mean when he tells us a little while, you will not see me? And again, a little while, and you will see me, because I am going to my Father. So they were saying, what does he mean when he says a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Now, how many know, let's just stop right there. How many know Jesus would say things that didn't, they didn't know what he was talking about? But how many know after he rose from the dead and the Spirit of God came, they knew what he was talking about? See, God has that for us. The person of the Holy Spirit is so important in your life personally. Personally. He, he wants to do things for all of us, but it's, it's a matter of us allowing Him to do those things. Amen? What I'd like to do, I, I, I want to go in next week into this, that the person of the Holy Spirit and how to work with Him. Right, because I'm going to show you some scripture where it talks about uh, opposing the Holy Spirit or resisting the Holy Spirit. There's another verse that says grieving the Holy Spirit. Another one that says quenching the Holy Spirit. Another one in the Amplified it says opposing and outraging the Holy Spirit. You can outrage Him. There's things that people could do to actually outrage Him. And then, I don't know about you, but I want to know what those things are. I want to work with Him. Right, and I understand it. it I'm just talking about, usually it's people that, that love God, they don't, they're not purposely going that way to outrage Him. But there, there's some, especially mocking and scoffing, and when you get into the blood and some of those, I've seen some comedians sometimes on TV, I'm like, I feel for you right now, dude. You don't want to mess with what you're talking about the blood right now and you're making a joke? Hey, it's not funny. Not funny at all, it's zero funny. And, 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 the, and you're, right now you, you are insulting the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that caused the power in the blood and the resurrection. Amen? God loves him, but it's like, God help him. 
No, don't go there. Uh, we'll end with this. Is there such a thing as a unforgivable sin? Absolutely yes. The Bible talks about it. The Bible talks about it. But it's difficult to commit. But there is one. First John says, listen, if you see your brother sin, a sin that's not unto death, pray and I'll give him life. He said, there is a sin, a sin unto death. I don't say to pray for that. Wow. Otherwise, God wants us to realize that, yes, there's stability in our salvation and the person of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, the reason I'm ending with this is because if you have a desire to be used by the Holy Spirit and, and you're going to open yourself and he's going to open himself to you. Just make sure you never back up. Because you're putting yourself in a situation where, you know what? You, you get into the intimacies of the Holy Spirit, and then you want to turn and go the other way? That's a bad choice. That's a really bad choice. And, and Kill and I talk about this some. Just There needs to be in the church, and it's coming again, there needs to be a fear of God. I have a, a real healthy fear for God. You know, when his presence comes sometimes and I'm alone, I'm sitting on the deck and it's early in the morning, you, I can hardly breathe. I'm like, because oh. oh. he's God. He's almighty God. And when you begin to understand, yes, you know, he brought us into this wonderful life, but he's God. He said to me one time, you know, I don't, he said to me, I don't need you to be me. I'm God all by myself. He said, but you need me to be you. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> because I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the person of the Holy Spirit. Lord, the more I speak of you, Holy Spirit, the more you fill this room, the more we're aware of you. And Lord, I pray for your church that we'll step into the deep waters, God. We'll put our sails up for the big winds. We'll walk out in the heavy rain, God. Those things that we require and we reach for. Because it's needed in this hour. Lord, you have it for us. I pray for the church, not just in this room and not just watching, but worldwide. That the church would grow up, step up into the deep waters of God. Because the world is dying. And they need demonstrations of the living God. And it's going to come out of your body. We thank you for that. Lord, we say yay. We say yes. We position ourselves for more. We love you. We need you. The world needs you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Who's doing offering tonight? I guess it's me. No, here's what, I, 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 during worship, I thought it would be me. So the Lord gave me this example for offering tonight. Do you remember when Jesus uh, asked Peter this question. Peter, who should pay taxes? The foreigner or the sons of the kingdom? The Lord, the foreigner. He said, you're right. But in order to avoid offense. You know, the Lord does things like that. He'll do things just to avoid offense. He does that all the time. But it's being sensitive to the Holy Ghost and finding out when those times are. Because put it this way, if you're out of time, that can actually be a compromise. But if it's in time, then it's just an incident the Lord's doing to avoid offense at the moment. But I love what he said to Peter that day. He said, here's what I want you to do. He said, I want you to go fishing. I mean, when the Lord tells you to go fishing, that's a good day. I just heard from the Lord, told me to go fishing. So he goes fishing. He says, I want you to cast in your line and the first fish you catch. Remember, open the mouth, what do you find? What's it for, though? Yeah, and he actually said, it'll be enough for me and for you. So not only was it just money, but it was just enough money for to do what he asked, needed done. I didn't say that there'd be a bag of gold in the fish's stomach. No, one coin in the fish's mouth. And God wants to teach us, listen, if, if, you, if he blesses you supernaturally to pay your tax at the moment, don't worry about the next day. Guess what? He's got more manna the next day. He's got more stuff the next day. Because our, our mind is we better lay up, we better prepare. And it's good to be prepared. I'm not against that. But if you're in a position where you, you, you can't be any more prepared than you are, then you're in the miraculous. God's got another miracle for you every day. 
And it's, you know, it's like this. The children of Israel, how many days did they get up and go out and there was manna? No, not every day. Yeah, six days, and then they now they got double on the on the sixth day, and it lasted for the seventh day. What happens if they got double on the first day? It would rot. How, how, how does that happen? It's the same manna. Well, what's the Lord teaching them? He's teaching them how to trust Him. And He's so good they even start complaining. I want meat. I want meat. I want quail. I'll give you meat. I'll give you meat till it comes out your nose. <laughs> and He did. Right? And think about that. How often did a wind come up? You know how many quail it took to feed that lot? He blew them in. From somewhere, I don't know where, the wind blew them in until they were deep like this everywhere. And my point is, listen, corn in the fish's mouth, man every morning, quail blowing in. Hey, God will take care of you. He will take care of you. I could see Peter down fishing. Can you imagine how excited Peter was with going down with his line? I mean, he's fished a lot. He's a fisherman. But he had a special day that day going fishing. And I could just see him casting, waiting, waiting, getting that first fish in. Right? Pulls it in. He's in a boat on the shore. I don't know. But he opens that fish's mouth. There it is. First fish. Here's my question. Do you think he caught more and checked them? I know he did. Because <laughs> he's a man. <laughs> if there's a According to that fish's mouth. No, what did the Lord say? The first fish you catch. See what I'm saying? I can just see the Lord when he's going back. Peter, did you catch that fish? Well, yeah, Lord. Did you check all the other fish? Yeah. Yeah, I did. You, you, you may not think he's that way. He is that way. Because the Lord, he not only wants to bless you in your life, he wants you to get to know him. And he knows when we do stuff like that. And he doesn't mind. God doesn't even mind if you experiment spiritually. How are you going to learn? Step out. How are you going to learn? He's not up there going, oh, that just really offends me that you didn't do it just the way I wanted you to. Well, hey, I'm learning, you know. But that, that coin in the fish's mouth, what an incredible uh, demonstration of the provision of God. God did that. And I could just, I mean, Peter saw stuff like that from the Lord. Did, personally. God wants us to have experiences like that personally. Did, did any of the other disciples know about it? I don't know if they, if Peter ever told them. Like sometimes the Lord will do stuff for you just because he loves you. And whether you tell anybody, that's up to you. But he, he's not doing it so you could e e even share it. He's doing it just because he loves you. If you never told anybody. He just loves you. Amen? Amen.